Thank you for stopping by to check out this episode of Vintage Audio Review. In this episode, I'm going to talk about this Mark Levinson number 336 power amplifier. This is a beast of an amplifier. It weighs 150 pounds and it is pretty big size wise. It's, I believe, 18 inches across by 19 inches deep by 10 inches high. And like I said, it is just a hefty piece of amplifier. It's rated at 350 watts per channel into 8 ohms at not more than 0.5% THD from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And the frequency response is plus or minus 0.1 dB over that same frequency range. It is a quasi class A design, meaning that it's not class A, it doesn't draw as much um, current as a class A amplifier would do, but they did some other circuitry uh, tricks to get it to work with some of the class A benefits apparently. It has 32 output transistors, 16 per side. It is just a, a big beast of an amplifier. There's heat sinks all around and these are actually heat sinks that draw off the, the heat of the amplifier. They're not for decoration like the Rotel amplifier that I reviewed a ways back. So we'll take a real quick tour of the front. There's not much there. And then we'll look around back. There's a little bit more there. Pop the cover. Not a lot you can see, but we'll see what you can see with the cover removed. And then we'll go into the measurements, of course, and what I thought about it while I listened to it. This is a close-up view of the number 336 power amplifier and there's really not a lot going on. You have your uh, power LED right here and then we have our on-off switch. So right now it's, it's actually in the dimly lit mode and the first thing you have to do to start it is go ahead and press it. You can see the light got brighter and then it starts flashing and hopefully you heard that secondary relay click and then you have to um, press this like that just the right way and then you heard a bunch of subsequent relays click so now it's in the the actual operating mode and to turn it off you would hit it and it flashes it's almost in the standby mode and then you have to hit it again and then it went dim. So now it's in the standby mode. It does have uh, trigger capabilities, so it could be triggered on, but it's actually in standby mode, and at standby mode, it's drawing, oh, maybe half an amp. This obviously is the rear of the number 336 power amplifier, or as Mark Levinson calls it, a dual monaural amplifier. That's fine. Starting on the right, we have our unbalanced RCA input, it's gold plated, and then we have our XLR balanced input. We also have speaker wires here, the connections for the speaker wires, and the two reds are the same point electrically, and the two blacks are the same point electrically. Their purpose is for bi wiring. Now, if you look into the math of it and the electronics of it, bi wiring buys you absolutely nothing, but they do have the capability to, to do it uh, on this amplifier. Now, I should point out, and let me just turn one of these. So these are nice, they're easy to turn and snug things down, but you can only put either a bare wire that you bend to fit in that spot. Uh, it doesn't have a place to stick a wire through, or it's really designed for some type of big spade lug. So there is no capability to hook up a banana uh, jack type speaker connector. So. Um, that's kind of a little ding in my opinion on this particular Mark Levinson amplifier. However, these big uh, connectors, there's plenty of room to turn and I do like them. It's just there's no banana jack and in order to do my testing, um, I had to modify my uh, test set to connect to a spade lug. Not a big deal, but it took me a while to do. I should point out that all my testing that um, you will see was done using the unbalanced inputs. Now we have these communication ports over here and over here. One of these guys are for the something called the phase it um, connect 
ability and I guess that was popular back then and then I believe these are for Mark Levinson's own um, communications port for some of their gear. You have a main relay switch here and that would kill the power to the unit. You also have your trigger uh, in jack and out jack and then on this side you still have your um, connections like you do on this side for your balanced and unbalanced inputs and your speaker wires. Also they do sell adapters or you can get adapters where you can run these as a bridged monoblock amplifier if you so desired. This is what the Mark Levinson number 336 looks like with the top cover removed. I thought we would look around. We really can't see much but uh, you can see the inputs come in. Uh, one of them comes over here. One of them comes over here. What's interesting is they're not symmetrical layouts. I thought that was a little surprising. Uh, it looks like the boards are very high quality and they do use a lot of standoffs on the resistors. Also, you can just see the uh, big capacitors. Let me see, there's one right here. Uh, the filter caps, and we have another one here. And then on the other side, there's one there and then one there. But you know, you can't really see a lot as to what's going on uh, deep inside, and I'm not going to disassemble it any more than that. But it's just kind of an idea of a little bit of what's going on with this guy. Here is our standard THD SNR plot at 1 kilohertz with the model 336 power amplifier putting out 5 watts into 8 ohms. You can see that we've got right around, we'll call it about 27 dB of gain. The SNRs are, we'll call it 82 dB. And the THD is either 0.002% or 0.007%, we'll call it. So it's looking pretty good. The THD plus noise is also fairly low. Here we have the number 28 amplifier putting out about 5 watts into 4 ohms at 1 kilohertz and you can see that our THD is looking pretty good it's better than 0.007% our SNRs are above 81 dB we're at 26.8 dB of gain and you can also see the THD plus noise is reasonable here now you still have this little bit of noise on the left channel that uh, moves around just like it did in the 8 ohm load case. This plot shows the frequency response from 10 hertz to 40 kilohertz of the number 226, putting out about 5 watts into 8 ohms. The specification was that from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, it should be plus or minus 0.1 dB, and we are meeting that requirement. If you look at 20 kilohertz, which would be right here, the worst case for the uh, left channel would be about 0.1 dB. And the channels are balanced about 0.05 dB or so. So frequency response looks really good. Even at 40 kilohertz, we're only down maybe 0.25 dB. So this has a very nice frequency response at 5 watts into 8 ohms. Here is the number 8's frequency response from 10 hertz to 40 kilohertz, with it putting out about 5 watts into 4 ohm loads. The specification was plus or minus 0.1 dB from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, so we are meeting that at 20 hertz. And at 20 kilohertz, we're oh pretty much at a tenth of a dB or slightly over a tenth of a dB. And we are at about 0.05 dB of channel balance. So it looks pretty good. Uh, maybe not quite as good as it did with the 8 ohm loads, but pretty darn good overall. Here is our THD SNR plot at 1 kilohertz with the number 336 power amplifier putting out about 350 watts into 8 ohms. The specification given by Mark Levinson was that at 350 watts into 8 ohms, it should be less than 0.5%. It's above 0.5% a little bit. Um, the SNRs are between 80, we'll call it 85 dB and 80 7 dB. Now they said the SNR should be better than 80 dB, so we're good there. The THD plus noise at minus oh, 42 to 44 dB is not great. 
And that's a lot due to this harmonic distortion that's seen right here. Um, the gain is specified at 26.8 dB by Mark Levinson, and we're pretty close to that at, say, 26.2 dB. So it's doing pretty good to its specification from a long time ago in 1998. And in case you're curious what our harmonics were looking like, you can see that the third harmonic is higher than the second harmonic, or the odd harmonic is higher than the even harmonic, which is what you would expect from a solid state amplifier. And this is drawing about 13 amps at this point when it's putting out 350 watts into 8 ohms, according to my kilowatt power meter. Here we have our standard THD SNR plot at 1 kilohertz with the number 28 amplifier putting out 450 watts into 4 ohms. THD is looking pretty good, less than 0.02%. SNR is around 90 dB. THD plus noise also about minus 77 dB. The gain is right around 26.8 dB. And I should point out that I could drive this higher. Uh, it should get close to 700 watts into 4 ohms. However, the amplifier is plugged into my kilowatt meter so I can read the current draw and it's beeping at me, which means that it's hitting 15 amps or a little bit more than 15 amps current draw and I don't want to trip any breakers. So I'm just going to call it a day with this amount of power level. What's interesting is that other amplifiers that I have, let's say the Sound Craftsman RA7501, that guy can put out close to 700 watts into 4 ohms as well. And we don't have any trouble with the kilowatt meter beeping because it's a more efficient power supply design. The Sound Craftsman uses a Class H design, which is more efficient than, say, this Mark Levinson Quasi-A uh, output design, which is a bit less efficient, but it's more efficient than if you ran in straight Class A. So... That's kind of why I didn't run any more power than uh, 450 watts in a 4 ohms. Here is the number 336's multi-tone response with it putting out about 5 watts into 8 ohms. And this looks like a distortion-free range of between 13 to 16 bits. This plot shows the crosstalk of the number 336. And in this case, the active channel would be putting out 5 watts into 8 ohms. There is no specification for crosstalk, but it is really, really good. It's anywhere, I guess, from the worst case for the right to left crosstalk is maybe 96 dB all the way down to maybe 76 dB. So that would be the worst case crosstalk, and the left to right crosstalk looks a bit better. So anyway, this has really good crosstalk, but you would kind of expect that with a dual mono design. This is the output impedance of the number 336 power amplifier from Mark Levinson. And if you use the output impedance at 1K, you're going to get a damping factor of about 320, which would be the best damping factor or lowest output impedance I have measured to date. If you looked at the damping factor over here at 20 kilohertz, it's going to be about 58, which is still pretty darn good. So the output impedance of the Mark Levinson number 336 is very, very low. This plot shows the THD versus frequency at a couple different output power levels. The 1.3 here would indicate that we're at about 80 watts into 8 ohms, and the minus 13.7 would be about 2.5 watts into 8 ohms. Now, the worst case THD would be at 20 kilohertz, and that would be about 0.05%. The only specification for THD was that at 350 watts, it would be less than 0.5%. We will look at it at 350 watts into 8 ohms at 1 kilohertz. This plot shows what happens as you vary the input signal level, which makes your output signal level change. And this is all done at 1 kilohertz, and the amplifier is loaded into 8 ohms. If we start over here, we're at about minus 13, which equates to about 3 watts of output power. And then as we come along here at about plus 7.3, we're at about 290 watts. And then if we jump up another uh, dB, this would be about 
8.3, which is about 350 watts. So we're still better than 0.4% THD at 350 watts into 8 ohms at 1 kilohertz. Right now we're looking at the system noise level of the number 336 power amplifier. In this case, our outputs are terminated into 8 ohm loads and the inputs are terminated into shorts and you're kind of just seeing the noise level. Uh, for the left channel, it moves up and down. It's better than 80 dBV down for the most part, but it does, it does tend to pop up a little bit. The right channel stays pretty steady. It is better than uh, 90 uh, dBV down. So overall, it's not looking bad. I doubt you would hear this changing noise level of the left channel, but we'll find out when it's hooked up to the Wilson Watt 3 Puppy 2 loudspeakers. Mark Levinson only published a few technical specifications for the number 336 power amplifier, and it came pretty close to meeting the THD requirement at 350 watts into 8 ohms. It was a little bit over the 0.5%, but nothing to uh, cry tears about. The frequency response of the amplifier uh, definitely met the requirement of 0.1 dB, I believe, plus or minus 0.1 dB, or was pretty darn close to it. So it, it had a real flat frequency response, and it has the best damping factor or lowest output impedance of any amplifier I have measured thus far. There wasn't a specification on that, but just as a general comment. Now, I was only able to run it into 4 ohm loads, I believe around 450 watts, namely because this is not the most efficient amplifier. It's uh, a quasi-class A topology, they describe it, and so it, whatever biasing scheme they, they use, it draws uh, more power than, say, well, obviously a class D amplifier or um, maybe a normal class AB or like Sound Craftsman uses class H or the Carver uh, magnetic field power amps. Uh, this definitely uses more power than them, although it never really got hot um, in my testing or listening. A uh, normal temperature range of the heat sinks would be, oh, between 105 to maybe 109 degrees F is what I measured. And it's very uniform. They're pretty consistent, whether you measure here or back here. They, they did a good job of uh, distributing the heat evenly. It never really gets hot, but when it's just sitting there idling, it draws about 2.3 amps with um, no music being played. So it does draw a bit of current. But not too bad as uh, class a would draw it says it's capable of putting out quite a bit a lot of power into two ohms if you had the right uh, ac socket um, set up where you could supply 50 amps of current to this guy it uh, it would probably need that if it's going to run a lot of power at two ohms and i have no reason to believe that it wouldn't come close to doing that as far as the sound of the unit i hooked it up to my Wilson Watt 3 Puppy 2 loudspeakers and used my Carver C1 preamplifier and listened to a variety of music and it, it sounds just fine. I, I wouldn't say it sounded any better than a lot of other amps, but there's nothing one could complain about this amp. There is a slight amount of hiss, very, very slight, but you could still hear it um, coming out of both channels when I terminated both of the inputs into shorts. and just listen to the noise of the amplifier, and it was real, real low, but you could still hear a little bit of hiss, which is not at all unusual. Other than that, it's it's just a beast of an amplifier. You know, and, and a lot of people like the Mark Levinson name and brand, and uh, I don't really know about the quality of it. This particular number 336 amplifier belongs to a good friend of mine, and it's basically been sitting around as door art, as you walk into his home, he's got some audio gear, some of it's hooked up, and on the floor is this guy, and on top of this guy is a Macintosh 240 tube amplifier. Neither one of them are connected to anything. And finally, I was able to convince him to get over to my place so I could test it, and luckily it tests good, and hopefully he will hook it up to something around his home. As far as negative things about this that I haven't mentioned, one is it's Mark Levinson, so you really can't find any service literature on it, which means most likely you would have to take it to an authorized repair shop. 
or send it back to Mark Levinson. I think they're called Madrigal Audio now. And either way, it's going to be an expensive repair, most likely, uh, on, on this guy. I mean, it's started off expensive and it uses, um, you know, great big capacitors and 16 output transistors per stage. And it just would be an expensive repair. So if you were to buy one of these broken, unless you can do repairs, just keep that in mind. As far as, you know, it's sounding great, it sounds great, and it can drive probably any speaker load that you put on it with authority, I would say. You know, it would be a nice amp to have if you could afford it, no doubt, and have a place to put it. It's, you know, it's gonna, it's 150 pounds, so it's probably gonna sit on the floor on some fancy stands or whatever, but it is a nice amplifier, and I could understand why people would want it in their collection. Kind of my only nits on it are, you know, it's Mark Levinson, you're paying a lot for the brand. I really don't know about the quality. It looks like it's well built, but um, I, I can't really tell because I haven't owned one. Although if this is in the original 1998, it's still doing pretty good. I would say that their quality is pretty good, at least on this guy. And I'm not a fan of their speaker connectors. They have uh, to be, you have to use spade lugs of some sort. I guess you could wrap a wire, uh, you know, have a, a stripped wire and wrap it in there and tighten it down. But the fact that they don't make provisions for using banana jacks to hook up your speakers is, um, well, I would ding that if I were scoring the amplifier. Um, be that as it may, it surely would be a nice piece to have in your collection. Once again, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so. I welcome your comments. And if you like the video, like everybody says, click the like button. Until next time, have a great day or night.